And joining us live in the studio is a medical practitioner, Dr. John Mac Boala. Thank you, Dr. John, for joining us this morning on News on the Hour. Thank you, Father. Now, we're seeing an increased case, an increased confirmed cases of this, of this virus. Was this predictable? Well, sure, this is, a, this is something expected because if you look at the trend in all other countries, immediately they hit 10 numbers. You find the number growing to 50 and hundreds of thousands immediately because the projection usually is if one person is infected, they're likely to have contact with two or five persons. So that's how it multiplies. Yeah, now this is it. Be before we got to the current number, we, we did see other nations like China and European countries, Italy, and the most hit only after China right now. Was there anything we could have taken into cognizance as a precautionary measure to have averted the, the number of diagnosed cases we have right now in Nigeria? Well, uh, the current number is uh, usually is not something we can say this is in the exact because we yes. didn't carry massive testing. Yes. And we couldn't have done much at that time uh, proactively because we we're all waiting for WHO to uh, make some uh, statement because at that time it was quite new and most countries didn't know exactly the characteristics of this virus and what to do. So there was even a delay, a shutdown internationally, even uh, announcing it as a pandemic. So. Um, we've taken proactive measures from beginning, especially Lego State, to start setting up, and that's why they were able to pick up the first case uh, early enough. Um, but as a, as a nation, generally, we know that uh, our healthcare system is not uh, set for uh, this kind of uh, yeah. pandemic. All right, we just say with the knowledge we have under our belt about this pandemic, is, is there anything we can do ahead to prevent further spread and, and contact with this virus? Yes, okay. uh, we have to rely big on the social distancing or physical uh, distancing and we have to go further and not only in avoiding crowded space but also looking out for family members because some might mistake it to be only in a uh, social gathering because some family members might be careless so you also have to look out for them and as well as massive testing we have to start decentralizing uh, centers where we have centers where we can test people um, and get them quickly and isolate it on time and start management as well as contact tracing. These are things we need to do. And again, I will suggest we have a quick lockdown of certain regions, especially areas that are already have some confirmed cases now. You see Abuja is red, Lagos area is red. We have some cases around Ekiti. If we lock down early, like China did in Wuhan, uh, not so early they did, but they got good result. So I think now, we help us. You, you did make mention of something right now, social distancing and, and a lockdown. As a medical expert, help us understand the effectiveness of those two, social distancing and also a lockdown. Well, it's been proven for social distancing because this is an infectious disease that is spread via uh, contact. So generally, even in the past, other forms of types of flu infection have uh, been controlled via social distancing. So there's a positive measure and this is what we need um, to embark on. Now the lockdown will mean buying time. It is important to buy time in the sense that if we, if, if we start um, lockdown on time, we'll be able to reduce the burden on the healthcare uh, system as well as the healthcare workers because we don't have enough beds, we don't have enough ventilators and support for any complicated cases. So when we lock down, we'll be able to reduce the impact such that the number of cases will not be too much at a given uh, time. So gradually, because this is something that is likely to trend for months. All right. Now, there are conflicting um, views out there. Some are saying this virus is airborne and others are saying it's not airborne. And the reason for the use of masks we've seen in most European countries and China where the epicenter of this virus. Now, do you want to throw more light on that for us, please? Many are saying right now that there's a recent, um, there's a recent research in China that has proven that it can be airborne and people who didn't necessarily come as close contact with an in this case did contact the virus. Shed more light on that for us, please. That's true. Yes. In the beginning, it wasn't clear. Then at a point, it's uh, become a bit more clearer that this is likely to be a linear respiratory droplet in the sense that it's a bit heavier in nature. Yes. So once somebody sneezes, an infected person sneezes or cough, then it will drop uh, down the surface and not suspend in the air. 
But recently, like you rightly said, there's some uh, studies that people reported that, uh, experts reported that, yes, it can suspend in the air for some time. Yes. So that's now having some kind of uh, a mix in between respiratory droplet and uh, airborne. airborne yes. So we need to be careful, especially healthcare workers, because they are likely to be in the environment where the patient will be. So definitely, you might have to come in uh, from time to time to assess this person. So it might still be suspended in air. But if one uh, an individual is um, actually um, taking measures such as social distancing one and a half to two meters away and not going to crowded space, then you're not likely to have the effect of the um, aspect of the airborne nature of, okay. of the virus. Okay, and the wearing of the face mask in public places, is this a misnomer? Is this, is this panicking? Well, in, in Asia, they used to, so they still insist that it's, it's, it's okay. But the, the part of the reasons why they started bringing the um, other option in Europe and the US is because of the scarcity. At a point, it becomes so scarce. So now you have to rationalize the use. It's better for someone that's infected or someone that is sick to put on the mask than someone that is well. If two persons are sitting down maybe three meters distance and one is coughing, it's better the person coughing to put on the mask if there's only one mask. But in that situation, if I know I'm gonna stay for some time with this person, then why not? You should put on a mask. You should put on yes. a mask. If you're also going to an area that you, you're not sure if someone might just cough suddenly, if you have a mask, Public why not? Public places, it, yes. open spaces, put market spaces. Yes. Office spaces. Exactly. All right. Now, we, we are conscious that matters of our mental health come to play at such a time with the fear of, the, of death doing profound damage in advance of any actual infection. What counsel do you have to offer to people who may be literally scared to death at this time at the possibility of being victims to this virus? Yes, this is common and most especially people on self-isolation or on uh, forced isolation, they, first, they will likely face this um, issue. So. Um, we we'll usually advise uh, individuals to stay away from too much uh, news and social media related to the uh, uh, COVID uh, disease. And then as well as have close contact with relatives. This is a time that we have to give support to each other, friends and relatives, call them, have video calls if they are on self-isolation, discuss with them. And if someone is having that situation and start experiencing anxiety uh, at the beginning, it's good to report on time. And I will also suggest that uh, mental health care um, society in the country should set up a system because this is already going on in many other countries whereby they have a, a toll-free line that people can call in yes. to, to, to speak on the issues. And that would be very helpful if a child comes on time. Okay. And post-infection as well is necessary okay. if someone comes now, up. Now, ours is a peculiar case. We're a peculiar nation. So I'm just wondering, what are the possible outcomes in a country like ours with poor health system? And even facilities, if the virus becomes as dominant in the community as, say, what is happening in England or even in Italy? Uh, we'll be seriously um, overwhelmed. Uh, because one, most of our centers, if you see, we have 100 beds, 140, and we're a highly populated country. So we'll not be able to sustain that. Um, even um, advanced countries that are like US are struggling to get ventilators. That's at some machines that you need or if you need to manage someone with complicated case of this disease. So we have to do everything we can do um, not to get to that stage. Um, at this stage, probably uh, WHO might want to start looking into assisting um, countries such as ours, but we don't have to keep on relying on that. And this is a wake up call for, for all of us, including the, the government and uh, the, people, the leaders to make sure we set a, 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 a health system that will be able to sustain such things. Now, doc, Dr. John Mack, tell us, is, is there any good news for us? Um, behind this dark cloud, is there any silver lining? Um, well, if you look at what's happened in Italy, uh, this is some countries we look up to, uh, England as well, and um, they're relatively struggling as well. The death rates are high, most of these countries. So, um, we have to learn quickly from what happened in those places and marry what we can do with the resources we have. And as it is, like mentioned earlier, we just have to prevent. So all the preventive measures we have mentioned, we need to apply them solidly. To, uh, that's the only hope we have. Now, now we, we seem to be suffering from um, an information deficit or, or misinformation situation right here. It is a put of both 
um, too much information or misinformation or under information um, and people still have their superstitions around around all of this um, um, COVID-19 and I'm just wondering can you help us identify the headline issues for the average man or woman out there who still have their doubts and superstitions and are uh, underinformed or misinformed about the COVID-19? Um, yes there are a lot of uh, information circulating uh, unfortunately, um, once it's a video, people tend to believe it or pay attention to it. Uh, we have to be careful. I advise each and every one of us to rely more on the news uh, from either from uh, um, uh, radio stations or TV stations and also the NGCDC. That is very, very important. And also have each one of us should have a, a, a doctor, even if it's a family member or, or, or the hospitals we attend, so we can call the doctors and clarify on any information that we receive. Already even in developed countries, people have had problems with the chloroquine, for instance, yes. that they were self-medication, taking self, uh, uh, they were doing self-medication, they had problems. Um, sooner or later, it might be the same problem if we didn't take action. So, um, yes, there are some also that uh, did mention issues on the hubs and stuff like that. There are some hubs that were used locally before that were okay uh, and didn't cause harm. But when there's a problem like this, people might tend to over take overdose and they might have underlying illnesses. So it is always good to um, have some uh, discussion with your medical practitioner if you're, you have to make use of certain um, uh, supplements or hubs. All right, Dr. John, just before I let you go this morning, you want to tell us, are we overreacting or are we underreacting as it stands right now? Um, I will say it's better to overreact, but we are not yet because uh, I feel that we have taken these actions on lockdown earlier okay. and enforced the social distancing much earlier because this is the only thing we have. That's our tool for now. So it's really, if we do too little too late, uh, the, uh, corona, the impact of the coronavirus may overwhelm us and um, cause too much infection. You know, our population is like 180 million. So if you take the production of 2%, you are looking at three to six million people uh, dying. So we don't want that. It's better we slow it down to have uh, um, less impact on the population at once because this is something that's going to last for a year or more. So uh, it's better to overreact than to say, oh, if I've done this, then you look like a fool. Have we seen the worst of this virus? Do you think it's blown over anytime soon? Yes. Um, this number of persons we have had had contacts. So definitely sooner or later, in a week or 10 days, there about you start seeing the multiplication effect where you can give up to 100 cases in a day um, uh, because they already had contacts and we're, going to, we're likely going to have more test kits. So that's going to show. But if we lock down on time, it might halt quickly and it's not going to spread um, like in other countries uh, like Italy and the rest. Dr. John Matt Bala, thank you very much for joining us on News on the Hour. Thank you.